35% down, by the way, is a big, big downturn. Just to put it in perspective, like that's how much or even more than the stock market went down during World War II. And that was a world war. We're fighting. People were like hundreds of thousands of people were dying, right? We're sending off all the production was, was focused on military equipment that, that just went overseas and got destroyed, right? And people that were killed and our labor force was completely diminished. It is March 20th, 2020. This is the video log. It takes 30,000 to a million. I'm not sitting anywhere near a million at the moment. In fact, I'm 40 grand lower than I was a month ago. Even though if you came to this channel and watched a video a month ago, you would see that I had $25,000 worth of cash ready. To invest and I had all my I was completely unleveraged and ready for a crash and as soon as it dropped five or six percent I started to dive right in thinking that uh, I can just uh, lever up for as it as the market drops further and further down like it did in 2018 December and of course I was wrong about that uh, all the money printed in the world couldn't save the market and what money am I referring to I'm referring to the cash that the Federal Reserve has been printing and made available for the markets that they're not necessarily taken at the moment, even though there is a liquidity crunch. Basically what that means is a dollar shortage. What does dollar shortage mean? Well, if you go to sell something, what do you trade for it? Everything you do out there in the economy is a trade. That's an important point, actually. If you go to work, you trade what? You trade your labor for dollars. Right? If you go to the market, you trade what? Trade your dollars for stuff. Right? So if people want to get out of assets like um, stocks or bonds even, right? Some people are trying to get out of bonds. Um, then you, you need what in return? Dollars. So right now there is a global dollar shortage because everyone wants to get out of stuff, right? They need to relocate their position. They need to hold cash because they want to rebuy at a lower price. They want to hold cash because they want things to sit. Uh, they want. They need time to decide what to do. And the dollar is the most liquid currency in the entire world, and it's still having trouble. There's still a shortage, right? What does liquid mean? It means the amount of a thing that is available to trade at any given time. That's what liquid means, like water. It can move very easily because there's a lot of it, right? So um, anyway, <clears throat> moving on. So a global dollar shortage. So asset prices are just crashing down. And I want to share some things about, uh, first of all, why I am still bullish and why I, I'm keeping that fundamental reason uh, of investing to be 55% plus bull because even though at the moment there is a dollar shortage the central banks around the world including including our very own Federal Reserve has made available over two trillion dollars to the banks um, and is going to be using that money to outbid them for things like treasuries for things like bonds um, so they've officially restarted quantitative quantitative easing and all all these repo operations, open market operations, almost. So basically, what they're going to be doing is buying bonds from the market, and therefore, when they buy the bond, whoever's selling them the bond, like let's say a bank, is going to receive cash, right? And that cash is the liquidity this bank needs to repair, to start repairing its its balance sheet. So. And, and maybe uh, delever, right? Deleverage. So at that point, the balance sheets of all these institutions or hedge funds or banks starts looking a lot better and they have what they need. Um, so because there's so little high quality collateral out there for the Federal Reserve and central banks to buy, 
uh, now that we've announced that they're going to accept a different collateral for cash, right, in order to sustain some accounts margin balance. So they accept things like corporate bonds, um, probably mortgage backed securities like they did in 2008. Um, and even are considering stocks as collateral. So they're really trying to support the market without outright buying the market, basically what's happening. And that's a lot of cash. I mean, inflation has been running at 2% or so for the last, I don't know how many years, 20 years or something. And um, it could actually kick in into overdrive here because the response has been so enormous. Now, not only that, not only the banks, but fiscal stimulus, okay? So what is fiscal stimulus? It basically is money coming from the government, okay? As opposed to monetary stimulus, which is what I just described, coming from the central banks. Now, the fiscal stimulus is basically the government giving you money, all right? So let's say one proposal is to send every person in the United States a check of like a thousand or twelve hundred dollars or something like that to try to offset the losses that people have been experiencing because of the disease. That's one option that people that government is considering right now. So other things, what what's another form of stimulus? Well, uh, lower taxes, right? So one thing that uh, the president has done so far is to eliminate the interest eliminate the interest of student loan debt so that's less money being taken out of the consumers they're also thinking about other tax cuts what else well bailouts all right bailouts is also a form depending on the interest rate if it's a zero interest rate right that's temporarily introducing money into the hands of the huge businesses that need them to pay expenses like employees and stuff like that so that's going to be basically trading labor i'm sorry trading uh dollars for non-labor right so introducing units of money without any labor in return uh which will dev which will in turn theoretically anyways devalue the um the currency and um because that's what happens in every hyperinflation is there's usually a supply shock in the currency. You can't really buy anything with that currency because there isn't any supply from that country. And so what happens is the paper becomes more and more worthless as time goes on. So I think that the U.S. will start falling into that path of inflation. It may not be hyperinflation, but I mean, pretty heavy inflation. The thing is, the dollar is the world's re uh, reserve currency, and what that means is that everybody goes to dollars when they need liquidity, and so that's a force that kind of counteracts the inflationary forces that the government and the central bank are exhibiting on the currency, right? So there's a battle there between those two forces. If United States were to fall off the reserve currency status, then and they adopt a different currency, say say the English uh, pound or the Japanese yuan or whatever you want, then the dollar would probably not get that liquidity in, in when there is a crisis. Okay, just like every other country besides the the United States at the moment, whenever they have trouble, their currency drops. Right, Russia had trouble like a few years back. The currency dropped by like 40% or something like that. Now, when um, a country has a problem, the currency drops, right? But currencies like the euro or the dollar, especially the dollar, they tend to rise in uh, an environment when there is some kind of a shock because people need to re relocate and their accounts are all measured into euros or um, dollars. And so there is a, sh a short temporary shortage of this fiat currency. Now, <clears throat> what are things happening here? Well, I've been 
listening to a lot of um, fund managers and um, people who are aware of the market, I'm not going to name any names, and they've started to convince me that even though th this monetary stimulus is very, very outlandishly heavy, the bear market might be a little bit deeper even still. And so we could be setting up for a bull trap here. So if you don't know what a bull trap is, it's basically um, it's basically after a big bubble pop. Let me see if I can find an image for you guys. All right. So what is a bull trap? Oh, there's the. Let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit. Let me see if you can see it here. All right, there you go. There's the bull trap. So, as you can see here, um, perhaps if if we take, if we believe that this is a bubble, then we've gone through the enthusiasm, greed, and delusion stage, and now we think that there's a new paradigm of, you know, U.S. stocks never going down or whatnot. Or, although to tell you the truth, I don't think that we've gone through these stages. I mean, I think people have been pretty fearful of corrections and downturns, but that's a whole other topic. So what ends up happening here is that there's a bit of denial, and so there's usually a bounce after a big sharp sell-off. And so that's called a bull trap because people think it's the return to normal, but yet there is a lot more uh, downside to come. And so we still have yet to go through the fear phase. Now the downside of this chart makes sense to me, okay? I do think that we've been in a bit of denial. Like personally, right, I have been in a bit of a denial that all this money printed wouldn't influence the market upwards, and it hasn't, okay? So the forces of uh, deflationary forces have been greater, deflationary meaning uh, the, dollar, the dollar rising, the fiat currency of the dollar, not gold or anything else like that. So... I have been personally right in denial that all this money will not and backstopping will not influence the markets and return the prices of assets back to a, a more normal level like uh, you know not 35% down 35% down by the way is a big big downturn just to put it in perspective like that's how much or even more than the stock market went down during World War II and that was a world war we're fighting people were like hundreds of thousands of people were dying right we're sending off all the production was was focused on military equipment that, that just went overseas and got destroyed right and people that were killed and our labor force was completely diminished and the market only went down 35 percent or something like that 30 35 percent now granted we're coming out of the great depression so the levels of businesses were pretty depressed to begin with but still i mean that is that is an impressive downturn. Um, the only bigger downturn I think to this date has been the 2008 crash. I think we even went down less in 2001. I can't quite remember. But in either case, it's a very, very significant, very sharp and fast sell-off. So if we go back to this, I do believe that I have been in this denial, right? So if that is true, then we're setting up for a return to normal. Okay, that's about 30%, maybe uh, a little bit less here. So there is should be a bull trap rally that I could use potentially to get rid of all of the leverage. And then what I'm gonna do in, is, my plan is to wait down this entire, wait down this entire downturn, um, just in case I'm wrong, right? Because I have said that I'm gonna be 55% bull and I'm gonna be turning after such a big drop, I'm gonna be turning, you know, I'm 100% bull uh, because of the monetary and fiscal stimulus reasons, not on a real value basis, but a nominal value basis for sure. And my real value play is things like um, energy transfer, chemical, so basically oil, oil, uranium, silver, and gold miners, so things that are tied to real things. And those are speculative positions, of course. They're just 
stocks just like any other stocks and they could go down in value with the rest of the market and so far they have but looking at the fundamentals of these companies you know oil's down so the mining production you know mining is going to be a lot cheaper um there's probably going to be people looking for work so they could probably get some you know people to work for the for the mines for a lot less money because you know you can't wait tables when all the restaurants are closed you need a, you need a real job right sorry all you waiters um that is you are doing a real job okay i'm kind of part of the gig economy too so i'm insulting myself as well so anyway people might have to start you know looking for other work and they'll accept lower pay and um if this if I'm right and this business is booming, they will accept new employees. Now, the price of real stuff will go up, so that's why I actually have speculative positions on silver. Right, that's why I bought the silver calls. I have silver calls ending in uh, June 30th and January 15th of next year. So I'm expecting a very sharp bounce of silver as soon as this stuff that we're going through right now looks like it might end. So some people are saying that, you know, numbers that are pulling out of studies and extrapolations are numbers like, um, you know, June 1st. So that's quite a bit of time from now, you know, that's like two months or two months and a half or something like that. So somewhere around that area will be maximum despair. So if we go back to the chart here, so this would be, you know, March, so April, <clears throat> and then May, and then June, right? June will be maximum despair over here. So we would have theoretically capitulation during next month of April and May. And then things will start returning back to the mean. So supposedly that's how the, bull, uh, the bear market is going to play out. Now I'm not so I'm not certain it could be so what I'm gonna do is use this bull trap that hopefully we have coming in to in order to sell <clears throat> some of my leverage positions and repair my balance sheet myself so I can ride out the bear market without losing all of my account. <laughs> okay, I mean I'm not gonna lose all of my account, but there is a chance that I, I lose a really really big portion still because of leverage employment. So I'm going to have to delever and if June 1st comes around um, and we're sitting at an extremely low level, then I'm going to probably dip into leverage back again. And if things don't repair by then, I mean, that's really bad. I'm going to have to start looking for some other stuff to do. <laughs> like gold panning or whatever. I mean, at that point, it's just a global depression, basically, and it's just, you know, sc scrapping for food in the streets and global uh, shortages of food and all kinds of bad stuff. So at that point, the least of my worries will be my stock market portfolio, right? <laughs> so um, there we go. That's what I have to say for today. Uh, if you managed to watch the entire video, thanks for staying. And you can let me know that you've watched the entire video by saying by typing in the comments below your the today's phrase, which is of course going to be bull trap. So if you watch the video in its entirety, type bull trap in the comments. All right, that's it. Peace out.